welcome to the 11th lecture of our open online course computer numerical control of machine tools and processes in this lecture we will be discussing about uh, programming practice involving gnm codes and we have already completed programming on point to point control uh, on a, a, a drilling exercise we have carried out now we will be carrying out uh, programming on milling which means uh, continuous control and of course uh, some drilling exercise will be included in it after that we will concentrate upon uh, turning exercise cnc turning that means uh, basically uh, lathe work so to start with let's go right into the particular programming practice we are taking uh, uh, shapes of this type and these might seem to be uh, very much you know quite funny and not at all connected with uh, engineering practice but actually they provide us a very good opportunity to test out and practice certain programming features which are available in g and m code cnc programming first of all these jobs are bilaterally symmetrical therefore we can uh, test out mirror imaging on them mirror imaging is a facility by the help of which we can program for one side and after that call the same program once again with mirror image so that the other side of the particular mirror axis is done is carried out without rigorously writing down all those program lines we will also learn about linear interpolation there are uh, linear interpolation applications here circular interpolation and then tool length offset tool diameter offset subroutine call can cycle drilling cutter compensation and cycle cancellation and many other ordinary features are also there so we will be taking this particular part and applying uh, cnc programming on it so that it can be uh, you know a program can be made which will cut it out on a cnc machining center the program structure will be like this there will be a main program in which the program will start so this is the main program so starting commands will be executed after that there will be a call to the milling subroutine and one side of the part will be milled that means the outer profile will be cut by milling operation then it will come back to the main program after that mirror imaging will be declared and after that the milling program subroutine will be called again so that the other side of the uh, part will now be carried out by milling then it will return to the main program once again cancel mirror command and give a call to the drilling subroutine drilling will be carried out and it will return to the main program and there the programming will end so this is the basic structure of the program uh, i hope it's visible uh, very clearly to everybody let's start with the program first of all in the main program it's residing in uh, you know line number 0039 and when this program has a starting line which is consisting of you know g90 absolute programming g00 uh, fast positioning then g40 cancellation of tool uh, cancellation of uh, cycles which are you know active when the program is started cancellation of tool length compensation sorry g40 was cancellation of tool diameter compensation g49 is cancellation of tool length compensation g80 is cancellation of cycles which may be active and then 
G 53 uh, deals with the program, you know the coordinate system, the machine coordinate system and per, uh, connected with G 0 uh, command we are moving to the point x 0 y 0 z 0. After that we go to the uh, I mean for tool selection we give a command m 0 6 which con is concerned with tool change which is the tool that we are selecting we are selecting tool number 12 mind you when we are de uh, uh, loading the tool number 12 we at this moment we are not loading any tool offsets. Tool offsets mean whenever a tool is loaded onto, onto the computer uh, uh, onto the machine spindle its length and the job height I mean the length of the tool protruding from the spindle and the height of the job above the table surface these things are not known to the machine unless they are declared by something called tool offset length offset and tool diameter is also not known to the machine that also has to be declared through specific commands. Coming to the line number 102, we have G 90, G 56, this is a work coordinate system which is being uh, you know declared, G 17, the plane of work is the x y plane and uh, in this work coordinate system we move to the point y 0, a uh, sorry x 0, y 0. Uh, I think at this moment something might have been blocked off by this figure it was y minus 10 please make this correction it is y minus 10. So, after uh, after that in line number 103 we have g 43 g 43 declares tool length compensation and the actual length tool protuberance and tool protrusion and uh, you know workpiece height they are together stored in this particular address location this register H 12 will be storing it and therefore, the machine control will go and access that particular value stored here and use it in order to uh, you know activate tool length compensation. Once tool length compensation is activated the machine would be having workpiece surface as z equal to 0 the spindle axis generally has the z axis and in this case we are dealing with a machine in which there is a vertical spindle axis and that is the z axis and the workpiece surface becomes z equal to 0. Ordinarily the table surface is z equal to 0. After this z 50, so it moves to z 50, 50 millimeters over the job surface. Next we have M 98 P 0037, 0037 is the address location of the milling subroutine and M 98 gives a call to the milling subroutine that means the machine controls will send the program control to this particular location 0037. The first line once again is the cancellation of all possible active commands program a machine coordinate system and after that we have the declaration of the spindle speed and the spindle starts moving uh, due to the command m 0 3. This is the spindle rpm and this is the feed value of 500 uh, you know millimeters per minute. Next g 42 is cutter compensation right or cutter diameter con con compensation right. It means that if you are intending to move your cutter all along the periphery of the part, uh, the, the cutter is not infinitesimally small, it is not a point object, but it has a finite diameter. Okay. It is a circular piece with a finite diameter, so that if you simply ask the cutter to move along this particular path, its center point will be on this particular path and therefore, it will machine on this side as well as that side and your job will be spoiled. So, a circular cutter with its center on this path moves along and spoils the job. So, you would like the cutter to move uh, uh, on the right side of the moving line is not it this way, but in that case you would have to do so much calculations involving coordinate geometry etcetera you know an offset line has to be drawn offset circles have to be drawn. 
So, all these things can be avoided by just telling the computer see I want to move my circular cutter of this particular radius always on the right side of the moving line and that is that command is represented simply by a single command as g 42. Where does the cutter get uh, where does the machine get the information about the diameter of the job that is stored in d 3 address location a uh, memory location. Okay. So, it is understood by the machine now that cutter right compensation that means, uh, looking along the moving line the cutter has to be shifted by its uh, you know by its radius to the right side. So, that the inner part is preserved and the outer part is anyway waste. So, after this we are simply going to move along the moving line and these are the commands let us quickly go through them like this one this one line n 0 4 gives the depth it goes down in depth to 2 millimeters and then it starts machining. How will it machine? It move it would first move straight and then along a circular path then along an inclined path then on a circular path. So, all these movements are given g 0 1 x 12 y 0 okay, and then g 0 2 x 20 y 8 r 8 these things we have already covered previously that means, circular interpolation okay, let us try out one here for example, this one is g 0 2 then we will be giving the target point location target point location here is 20 comma 8 that is why it is written here and the radius about which the, uh, the circular interpolation is going to take place is 8 millimeters as per drawing and the feed value is not mentioned here. So, so that the feed which has been declared previously here as 500 millimeters per minute that will be adapted here. So, after this circular interpolation it has finished up this part of the job and come to this particular location. Next we will have a straight linear movement right up to you know uh, this point where this line is tangent to the circle and therefore, it moves to g 0 1 x 18 y 30. Here it is interesting to notice that though this part seems quite complex it is absolutely extremely simple because all the circular parts they have been chosen intentionally to be either you know uh, half circles or quarter circles. If they are half circles or quarter circles they are finding out their uh, coordinate locations I mean the end coordinate location starting from the first coordinate location it is extremely simple. Moreover they are not only half or quarter circles they are basically uh, you know uh, the segments have been taken in line with the coordinate axis had they been inclined they would have uh, created uh, a little bit more of a pro problematic situation for us. So, uh, I am not going to painstakingly go through all these, but basically we will be doing linear interpolation, straight line interpo uh, circular interpolation, straight line interpolation, circle, linear and then circle uh, what do you call it counterclockwise, then circle clockwise and then circle uh, uh, once again counterclockwise and then circle clockwise and we will come here and after that linear interpolation. This will be our uh, you know mode of movement. So, after this we will reach this point and let us see where it is. It is this point only x movement has, has been carried out. So, that it is back at the axis point all these points are you know absolute coordinates that means, they refer to the actual coordinates uh, as per the drawing. So, uh, x 0 y 92 it has it has come to this particular point and this side of the job has been done with uh, compensation radius compensation. So, once this side has been done what we are uh, we are supposed to do is we are simply going uh, going to raise up the tool to a height. So, that it does not interfere with the work piece and take it back to the initial point that is good. So, in line number 15 we simply write g 0 1 z 30 since z equal to 0 is the work piece surface and uh, as you go upwards you have more and more positive values. So, z equal to 30 makes the tool move to 30 millimeters above the job surface. After that we go right down with cutter radius compensation cancel g 40 once we do not uh, need it we are cancelling it because 
if it is active, it does not uh, permit some of the commands to get uh, executed, some of the other commands. So, y minus 12, it has come, it has crossed this line and come right to this side. So, this particular side has been completed and after that, <coughs> we reach to this particular part. G 51.1 x 0, this is mirror image, okay. programmable mirror image. That means, no axis is getting physically uh, shifted, <coughs> sorry, the job is physically not shifted anywhere, but simply in the coordinate axis x is becoming minus x, that is all. So, if that is being done, so in uh, by this particular command g 51.1 mirror image, the axis about which the rotation is to be performed, this is mentioned here x equal to 0. So, once this is declared, whatever commands follow in all those subsequent commands, x will be taken as minus x and after this we give a, a call to the subroutine once again. So, if this particular call is given, it will again go to this particular program, execute all these commands and all the x values you know will be solved. All these locations would be solved for the movement of the tool <coughs> sorry through the interpolator and at the last stage the sign of x will be changed to the opposite sign. If this is done, all the opposite side geometries will be defined and the tool will be moving through all of them with compensation, with compensation. That means, we will still be using this program. So, still G 42 will be declared, but when G 42 is declared at the last moment, the coordinate values are changed. So, ultimately automatically it will be shifted to the left of the workpiece now. The tool is now shifted to the left of the workpiece when it is doing the mirror imaged side, but we do not change any commands. We keep it G 42, we keep the same command and automatically it shifts. So, after this particular command is executed, the other side is cut automatically and after the execution, it comes back to the main program. In the main program, what do we have? We have the z value to be 30. So, the tool is uh, raised from the uh, workpiece, it is free from the workpiece and there is a call to the drilling subroutine now. What does the drilling subroutine look like? It is residing in memory location 0038 and the command goes to this particular position. What happens here? First of all, again those cancellation uh, commands are given in the very beginning. The coordinate, uh, I mean the coordinate system and other things, I will not uh, repeat it. So, in the second line, we have M 0 6 T 0 4. That means, a separate tool naturally the drilling tool is now selected and the drilling tool is selected by the command M 0 6. Okay. A tool change takes place, the previous uh, n milling cutter flat ended n milling cutter goes back and the drilling tool is selected. So, after the drilling tool is selected, it is uh, set into motion that means M 0 3 uh, sets it at a motion of uh, 1500 rpm and next it goes to uh, this particular coordinate uh, this particular coordinate system is selected which takes uh, care of you know the discrepancy between workpiece coordinate system and machine coordinate system because the uh, the draftsman is drawing his figure with a particular coordinate system. This might well not match with the machine coordinate system when the blank is put on the table. So, the distance between machine origin and the origin of the work piece given here, this is 0, 0 point. This is taken care of uh, by the uh, declaration of a separate machine, uh, separate coordinate system. Next, 
n uh, line number 54 once again a length offset for this particular jaw uh, for particular tool and workpiece pair is declared and this value is residing in address location h04 and after that we execute we are inside the subroutine now we are executing the drilling cycle drilling cycle is given by g81 we have done this previously in another type of uh, programming that was you know uh, uh, programming with uh, siemens system this is fanuc system so g81 x8 y13 so what do these things mean x8 y13 gives the location of the first hole that is going to be drilled that's good and z gives the depth of hole and r15 is the level at which you know high speed a high feed value along z axis of the drill towards the workpiece will be changed from high speed to machine feed okay so first it's moving down by rapid motion and then it changes over to feed motion at 15 mm above the job this 15 mm is also quite high it can well be 2 mm after that in the next line we have simply the location of the next position of the hole center mentioned in the xy plane so once this ag81 is declared and once it is active as we go on giving different coordinate locations on the xy space we will be having holes drilled at those locations with these specifications depth equal to minus 3.5 mm that means uh, depth equal to 3.5 mm from the surface of the job and the change over from rapid to machine feed i mean for machining feed uh, at 15 mm above the job surface so once these points have been mentioned all these four drills will be done by these particular commands next we have uh, the tool moving up to 30 millimeters and then the tool going to the point x0 y0 and spindle becoming off and going this one going back to the main program and that's it the spindle goes off the uh, program is put off put to a stop and then uh, ultimately m30 stops the program okay and uh, assistance from you know staff and students of mechanical training workshop iit kharagpur is sincerely acknowledged for making this program and executing it now let's take a lathe programming exercise in the lathe programming exercise what do we have here we have a straight turned portion and we have a taper turned portion we have a circular interpolation carried out here next we have a groove and last of all we have threading we have chamfering and we have facing done here so we will start with the assumption that facing has already been done here and let's see the different diameters are given this is a, a metric thread with 1 mm pitch and the diameter of the thread is 12 mm and this is having 30 millimeters diameter this circular interpolation part and these diameters are also shown in the figure let us move right away into the program first of all here we will be having rough roughing of the outer diameter values okay what do we mean by the roughing that means before taking the finishing cut we need not bother much about the feed that we are employing and we need not bother about the depth that we are employing if you employ high feed you are going to have coarse surface finish if you employ high depth of cut you are going to incur uh, you know very large deviations of the part because the part will either you know bend as a cantilever or as a simply supported beam if high forces high uh, thrust forces are applied so if you have high depth of cut high feed these problems are going to occur but during coarse turning we do not much bother about it 
So, the spindle uh, speed is set to a maximum value of 2000 by this command G 50 2000 and next we have G 0 0 T 0 1 0 1 M 42. What does this mean? This means this particular tool tool number 0 1 with offset given by the command 0 1 is loaded and M 42 means high spindle speed range is selected which actually uh, you know uh, executes a gear change operation inside the CNC turning center. Okay. M 42 will lead to an automatic gear changing operation. So, there is a high speed range and a low speed range. Next G 96 speed mentioned and spindle speed to be you know uh, this spindle speed actually uh, it is written clockwise, but M 0 4 stands for counter clockwise counter clockwise. So, uh, this one is uh, uh, this one may please be uh, read as counter clockwise or M 0 3 can be used which is clockwise okay, M 0 3 clockwise. So, coming to the next line we have a fast movement where are we going x sorry this one is x negative this one is x negative please make this change x negative and that side is x positive. So, that means this particular space is z positive and x positive okay. the spindle rotating spindle always contains the z axis. Next, if we start the program now, it moves rapidly to a particular position 38 z 1. So, it comes somewhere here. So, the tool is on this side, okay. it is on this side and it approaches the uh, job and cuts it this way, recedes, goes back. In conventional machines, the tool is generally on that side. Okay. This is because the operator is here and he has to approach the machine and operate the tool. So, it is useful for him for the tool to be on this side and the tool is on that side because it uh, helps in automatic machines. It, it uh, helps in workpiece setup and further uh, the tool can be you know inverted so that all the chips which are coming they will be falling down and the and the spindle will be rotating in the opposite direction. So, let us start we have the tool coming to this particular position and from here it starts a machining cycle the rough roughing of the outer diameters. How is this done this particular uh, G code is executed G 71 and line numbers are mentioned here. So, from this line number to this line number it will go on executing this roughing cycle that means one cut after the other will be taken. So, that all the material mentioned here from the outer diameter to the final diameter it will be going on machining. What is the depth of cut used it is 1 millimeter. So, what are the other values expressed here like u the finishing allowance that means, some material will be left behind that is 1 millimeter along x that means, along the diameter and 0.1 millimeter along the axis z axis that is left behind and the feed is 0.1 millimeters per revolution. Okay. So, next we come to the actual movements what are these movements starting from line number 1000 to line number 1100 we will have you know these commands repeated. So, if we are having these commands repeated let us see we start from here and uh, mind you spindle is uh, rotating and we start from here actually and we start moving this way and the material is getting cut. So, let us quickly follow these movements G 0 0 8 millimeters why because this is chamfered and this has a 45 degrees slant. 
So, if we consider this diameter to, a, to be 12 millimeters from there, 2 here, 2 here, this comes to 8 millimeters. So, the cutter first comes to this particular point, okay, 8 millimeters. Generally, diameters are programmed. So, 8 millimeter diameter, it starts from here, it goes by 2 millimeters, sorry, it goes to the z equal to 0. So, it is right on the surface of the job. Next, it moves by linear interpolation, linear interpolation it will be moving from here and it will cut this slanted chamfered portion and then move by linear interpolation up to this particular point. Okay. Here these movements are shown. For example, G01, Z0, it comes and touches the job surface. G01, X12, Z-2, okay. it comes to this particular point, it has gone 2 millimeters inside, cut the chamfered portion, then z minus 22, it moves right from here and comes to this particular por portion, 22, 16 okay, plus 2 millimeters, it is 18 plus 4, 22. So, it cuts right up to this portion. After cutting right up to this portion, it moves out to 16 millimeters and then it cuts this uh, circular interpolation part, G02 target location and then the radius, this is mentioned here and next it will cut up to 35 millimeters and Z47 taper uh, cut okay, by linear interpolation. Next by again by linear interpolation this turn portion Z minus 55. Once all these commands are executed, written down and executed by the rough turning it will go on taking cut after cut with 1 millimeter uh, depth of cut until this particular part is finished. Once this is done, it goes to uh, you know uh, G42 that means now cutter uh, offsets are mentioned because it is going to take a final cut, previously it was rough cut, so we did not mention any uh, you know offsets. So, now offsets are mentioned in again it repeats it with a lower feed. If you have lower feed, you have better surface finish. If you have lower depth, we will have better, you know, if you have lower depth, you will have less of thrust forces and less of deviations. Okay. So, after this one is finished, next we go for G40 cancel of compensation, spindle stops and it goes to the 0, 0 position for a tool change. Why do we have a tool change? Because now we are going to do the groove. So, first we have rough turned the periphery, left some machining allowance and we are doing the grooving. How do we do the groove? We simply change the tool, okay, T0202, go for low spindle speed option, that is the gear change and after that with constant speed option, we go for you know 70 millimeter speed and M04 that means counterclockwise spindle rotation. Now, what is G96? G96 means constant surface speed that is even if the diameter is changing just like in rough turning also the diameter was changing as we took one after the uh, other cuts. What is happening is we are simply going for constant surface speed option so that there is no speed loss. If we do not cut at the recommended speed, we lose time. So, we are going for no speed loss here. So, the movement of the parting tool is simply you know down, down to the particular depth of x equal to 10.2 millimeters. That means, very close to the root diameter of this thread. So, we cut up to 10.2 millimeters, so that when this thread is cut, the tool will come out and get some relief, it would not be in touch with this particular surface. All right. So, now the threading part, once again a tool change will naturally be required. So, tool is changed and then we will cut from this side outwards to that side. In that case, the spindle will be rotating, you know, uh, the spindle will be rotating uh, counterclockwise. Okay, uh, sorry, spindle will be rotating. Sorry, 
spindle will be uh, rotating in such a way that the tool will be moving outwards. Okay. The tool will be moving outwards and 500 uh, spindle speed is taken and G97 means constant RPM is chosen. This time we are not choosing constant surface speed because if it is chosen then it will interfere with the particular pitch that is being cut. So, this way we first we take it to z is equal to minus 20 here and after that it is moving outwards. Okay, moving outwards and spindle is rotating clockwise. The spindle rotation is always uh, you know determined by looking from the headstock towards the tail stock, okay, from the headstock towards the tail stock and deciding whether it is clockwise or counterclockwise. So, this way this is the thread cutting uh, command. Uh, we give here the final points where it is moving. It is moving to z equal to 2 out from the workpiece 2 millimeters and 11.6 millimeters or is the x movement first and it goes on repeating this command by taking small, uh, smaller and smaller depths of cut till it reaches the ultimate diameter. Okay. Why do we do this? Because the thread profile has to be very uh, you know uh, very accurate and if you give a large depth of cut there will be deviation or deflection and that will interfere with the first of all with the diameter of the thread and also to some extent with the geometry of the thread. Here some details about the parting operation is provided that is after the job is done we will simply part it off here. Now that you have uh, come across all the other commands previously this will not be very difficult to follow. So, I leave this part with you people and this uh, for this we have generally uh, taken the help of CNC lathe programming and machining operations training manual of LMW Lakshmi machine works. Thank you very much. Thank you.